Hey kids, welcome back to Online Super Church. Sometimes the Bible can be a little confusing about when the stories happened. So we are going to be learning about the history of Bible events. These are all the big stories of the Bible put into order by when they happened. There's also a game that will go along with this series. If you would like to have a copy of the game, watch through to the end of this video and I have the information for you about how you can get your very own board game for free. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button and get ready to study the Bible. For now, let's sing. It's time for Online Super Church. One more time, kids. This time, faster. Are going through the major stories of the Bible to put them in order. Here is what we have examined so far. Number one, we saw God's creation. 
Number two, we saw the fall of man into sin. Then, number three, we saw the destruction of the world with Noah's flood. Last week, we looked at number four, when God called Abraham. Today, we are going to skip forward another 150 years in the Bible to look at a godly man named Joseph. Now, last week, we saw that Abraham was given a son. It was the son of promise. His name was Isaac. Then, Isaac had twin sons named Jacob and Esau. God's promises to Abraham were passed down to Isaac and then to Jacob. God then changed Jacob's name and called him Israel. And he had 12 sons and a daughter. Now, Jacob was not the best dad. He did something that he should not have done. He showed one child more love than the other children. He had a favorite. Now, it was not Joseph's fault that he was the favorite, but his actions made it really easy for people to like him. Well, let's take a look and examine this godly man named Joseph, the favorite son of Jacob, because he lived a life that is an example for us. In Genesis 37, verse 5, we begin to see Joseph's dream. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Now, what made this dream so significant? Well, there's something very important to understand about Joseph. He lived at a time when they did not have a Bible. All they had was God's message that he gave to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. It wasn't even written into the Bible yet. So at that time, God would send his message to his people through visions and dreams. So when Joseph started receiving messages from God in his dreams, it was kind of like God was choosing him to be the favorite. God wanted Joseph to lead his people with God's message. Well, this made Joseph's brothers mad. They already felt jealous of Joseph that their father treated him better than he treated them. But then, if God was going to show favoritism to Joseph, well, that just made him really mad. Now, we're going to see in the next few minutes, that God's visions were given to Joseph because he was a righteous man and his brothers were not. So what were these dreams that God gave to Joseph? Well, let's look at the first dream in Genesis chapter 37, verse 7. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. So the message that God sent to Joseph in this dream was a picture of a truth he wanted them to all know. The truth that God wanted them to know was that Joseph would be elevated above his brothers. Well, this made them really mad. They did not like God's message. They thought it wasn't from God, but that Joseph was just full of pride. And so they got bitter at Joseph and maybe even bitter at God because God would not let them be in control. Do you have pride and bitterness in your heart? 
It is a sin to be full of pride. And we need to submit ourselves to God's will or we'll get bitter. Joseph's brothers got bitter. Look at Genesis chapter 37 verse 8 and see how they responded to Joseph. And his brothers said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. But Joseph did not only receive one vision from God, there was more. Let's take a look at the second dream found in verse number 9. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Now this was a dream that meant Joseph's eleven brothers and his mother and father would bow down themselves before Joseph and treat him like a king. Well, this of course made his brothers even more jealous. But his father thought about the vision because he wondered, what is God going to do for my son? Look at verse 11. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Now, it may be that God gave Joseph other dreams. We don't know. But these two are recorded because they show us the contrast between Joseph and his brothers. Joseph was a pure vessel. He had a clean heart. And so God could use him to hear the word of God and accept it. But the brothers, they were not pure. They were jealous men. So second, let's take a look at the tragic sin of Joseph's brothers. One day, Joseph's brothers were out mixing with wicked people the ones in the land who they should not have been mixing with. And Joseph's father sent him to go find them because he had a message. Look at verses 16 and 17. And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flock. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. When the brothers of Joseph saw him coming, their bitterness and jealousy began to spew out in words of hatred among themselves. And eventually, they decided to conspire together to get rid of Joseph. Look at verse 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Joseph's brothers despised the dreams, which were God's word. What do you think about God's word? Well, Joseph's brothers decided to murder Joseph to get rid of God's word. But Reuben, the oldest brother, could not live with the guilt. So instead, they sold Joseph as a slave. Look at verse 27. Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. 
they ganged up on their brother. They ripped off his pretty clothes and they covered them with blood to trick their father. And then they sold Joseph as a slave to be taken to Egypt. And they thought that they would never see Joseph again. Well, next, let's take a look at the integrity or the purity of Joseph. Now, you might think that being sold as a slave would have made Joseph bitter. But instead, Joseph was the best slave there was. Look at Genesis 39, verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he put into his hand. God blessed Joseph's hard work and integrity or purity so that he became in charge of all the stuff in his master's house. Can you imagine a slave being put in charge? Joseph was full of integrity and because of it, he had opportunities that others were not given. Now with those opportunities also came temptations. You see, because he became such a powerful man, there was a temptation by his master's wife to do something wicked he knew he should not do. Would Joseph do the wicked thing? Or would he stay pure? And would he trust God? Let's take a look at the story in Genesis 39. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house, and he that hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater than I in this house, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph's brothers did not care if they sinned, but Joseph did. He wanted to please God. He wanted to be right and have a pure heart. He did not want to sin. Do you want to please God? Well, his master's wife was mad. And so she lied about Joseph to send him as a slave to prison. Joseph did right, but he was still thrown into prison. But God was still with Joseph. Look at verse number 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Well, finally, after several years, God elevated Joseph to a high position. Look at Genesis 41, verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. Verse 8. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. 
So in this story, God gave a vision to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and it was a word from God. But Pharaoh did not understand it. He needed someone who could understand God's word and tell him what it meant. So God allowed Joseph to be brought out of the prison into Pharaoh's house to give him understanding of God's word. Do you want to know God's word? Pharaoh did. Look at Genesis 41, verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Notice that Joseph did not try to take the glory for himself. He gave God glory for his ability because it was God who gave him the ability to understand the visions. So this vision, it was a warning from God to Egypt. There would be seven years of very good and plenteous crops and food. But then there would be seven years of famine. And it would be wise in the seven good years to save up as much food as they could for the seven bad years. Well, Pharaoh was so impressed with Joseph that Pharaoh decided to raise Joseph out of the prison and make him second in command in the whole kingdom. And his job was to collect the food taxes to save them for the time of famine. Look at Genesis 41, verse 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. <laughs> Joseph went from being a slave in prison to number two in the whole country. You know that story about when his brother sold him as a slave? They didn't know what God was going to do. Remember that wicked woman who lied to Joseph and put him into prison? She never knew that God had a plan. And finally, after many years, God allowed Joseph to become the most powerful man in the world. All because Joseph was a man of integrity who heard God's voice and loved God's word. Do you love God's word? Do you have a pure heart of integrity? That means you always do right even when no one else is looking. Well, the story of Joseph does not end there. We're going to jump forward several more years, nine more years. And at this point, it's been probably 15 years since Joseph has seen his family. But look. At what happens. In Genesis 42, God fulfills his promise to Joseph. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed of them. Through the process of time, Joseph's brothers stood right before Joseph, not even knowing it was him. And they bowed themselves down, fulfilling God's prophecy. Look at Genesis 45. And Joseph said unto his brethren, 
Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Joseph was not bitter at his brothers. He saved his brothers and their families, and he moved them all to Egypt during the famine so that he could take care of them. Joseph forgave. Do you forgive? There are so many lessons that we could learn from Joseph's life. More than we could focus on in one Bible story. It would take weeks to go through it all. But just from this lesson today, I want you to compare yourself to Joseph and ask these questions. Do you love God's word? Like Joseph did? Or do you hate God's word like his brothers? Ask this question. Do you get mad or bitter at other people, even if they deserve it? Joseph didn't, but his brothers did. And you know, it wasn't Joseph's fault that he got sold as a slave, but he never got bitter at them or at God. He forgave. Number three, do you have integrity? Joseph worked hard and did right, even when he was a slave, and even when no one else was looking. He worked hard for Potiphar, he worked hard for the prison guard, and he worked hard for his master Pharaoh when he was second in command. He had integrity and a pure heart. Do you? And finally, even though his brothers thought evil against him, God used it for good. This is a picture of Jesus. You see, when Jesus was on the earth, there were many who thought evil of him. The Pharisees and the high priest even delivered Jesus to be crucified. But it was through his crucifixion that we can have our sin forgiven. We can have salvation. Not salvation from a famine, but salvation from our sin and the penalty of our sin, which is the lake of fire. Will you let Jesus be your salvation? You know, after Joseph revealed himself to his brothers, his brothers could have rejected him. They could have spit at him and left and never returned. But if they had, they would not have enjoyed the salvation from famine that Joseph could give them. There are some children and even some parents who know the story of Jesus, but they refuse to let Jesus be their savior. Don't walk away from Jesus. Accept him. If you have never been saved from your sin by asking Jesus to come in your heart and be your savior, you could do that today if you will. If you would pray this prayer of faith to God and mean it in your heart, he is willing to save you. You could pray, dear Jesus, I know that I am an evil, nasty sinner, and I deserve your punishment. I am sorry for my sin. I believe that you died to pay for my sin, and I want you to please forgive me and save me. I believe you rose again from the dead to give me eternal life in heaven. I give you all my life, to control. Amen. 
Thank you for watching Online Super Church. If you have any questions about today's Bible lesson, have your parents email me to the email address on your screen, and I will help you in any way I can to understand more about our Bible lesson today. Also, if you would like a copy of the game board History of Bible Events, email me to request your very own free copy. This game will help you better understand when the stories of the Bible all happened. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend of yours. I'll see you in the next video.